Welcome back once again to Liquid Lunch. I am Erin Elmore in for John Tobacco. And yes, I know I made a mistake earlier. It is still October 13th, not October 12th. 79 days till 2021 and 20 days till the presidential election and zero minutes until my next guest, Greg Centineo, joins me. Greg, welcome. Thanks, Erin. Great to be here with you. Um, I had fun talking to you off camera before, and I kept telling you to save it because I knew this was going to be really fun. So you are a strategic entrepreneur and business accelerator influencer. What does that mean? I don't know. It just sounds really good. And um, I don't know. It's just kind of it's kind of tags that people kind of put on you after you do certain things. So it's kind of nice, man. They're kind of titles. It just I get things moving in in whether it's a, a, a existing company that wants to scale up or it's a startup with an idea that wants to get that to market. Um, and you need influence to do that, uh, to move people, to get your dreams and, and your goals, uh, make them reality. So, so do you mean influence in sort of the social media way that a lot, all, all the kids are talking about these days, you help people in, in social media or just help them because you're a connector of businesses and industries. Yeah. What is your expertise? That is great, man. The expertise is how do you, how do you move large numbers of people into your, into your, your area of goal? That's so it takes social media as well, which is Mm -hmm. vital and it's branding, it's storytelling, it's all that stuff. So yeah, to influence people is one side and also as an influencer on the, on the social platforms. So what's the perfect business right now? If you were looking to bring someone from a zero to a hero in terms of entrepreneurial stature, what are you looking for? What is the it factor right now that you want to see? You know, it's really, honestly, it's emotional intelligence. Oh, so good. It's totally emotional intelligence. Um, business today is led by those are the great leaders um, in the world. Are those that are led by the heart and soul? Mm-hmm. Have social intelligence, social emotional intelligence, um, cultural intelligence. That's that's the name of the game. It always has been the name of the game, uh, but it's more it's more vivid now. You see it more vivid in success and failure. Are there any sectors that are particularly hot right now? I think opportunity. Yeah, I think digital. The digital sector is is massively hot. I think um, new technology is massively hot. Um, let's, everyone's talking about right. Go back 15 years ago. They said I only knew about Facebook, and if what Facebook was going to do, I would have invested in Facebook. Well, uh, well, yeah. Know, hindsight's 2020, right? Everybody says the same thing. So, but they're not doing anything today. So they're making the same exact mistake they made 15 years ago. They're not doing anything. They're not looking right. at anything. So there are so many great. You know, whether it's Tesla today. Uh, which has got to be reckoned, man. You got to look at Tesla as not, it's not a car company. It's, it's a technology company, man. That's moving forward in the space of energy and, uh, and space ex- exploration. What is your take on cryptocurrency like Bitcoin? It's important to, um, to engage with that right now. It's definitely, it's going to be something I think in the very near future, that's going to be a massive part of society and the economy. There's no question about it. I think, you know, it has its ups and downs over the last few years and it's going to, cause it's like a startup, like anything else. It takes time. For it to be embraced, but I think you gotta definitely pay attention to it. Someone who doesn't like regulation, do you think that Bitcoin needs to be a little tighter on the regulation? You know, I don't know, man. I think um, some. It depends. You know, regulations are good. Uh, a lot of times, regulations, you know, you know, inhibit growth. And, right. Uh, and, and I think today, more than anything in the world that we live in, it's about pioneering and forging ahead. And um, so, you know, you can regulate something and it's, you know, it's, it's going to blow out the back end. So I think it's really hard to do things like, especially in tech space. That's so interesting. I was just listening to something on Fox business recently, and they said that millennials, although a lot of them aren't buying homes, the ones that are think that real estate is the best investment. What is your take on real estate? So, I think it's passe. Yeah, <laughs> I really do. I think, um, you know, 30 years ago, and and back, it was really it was the investment to make. Um, it was what w- was more accessible to the masses. It went up X amount per year. You know, 10, 15 years later, you had you had, you know, you made profit. You had appreciation in your home. Today, the world has completely changed. 15, 20 years ago, when digital the digital world entered into the into the phase of life in all aspects. It's changed everything, man. Um, especially how you're going to make money moving forward. And you can, and I don't, and I'm not an expert on that. I could just tell you there's more millionaires 20 under 30, there's more millionaires under 40, there's more millionaires under 50, there's more billionaires now today. And it's not because of real estate. 
That's so true. It, it, you're really right about that. So what would you tell a young millennial that was going to get started out and say, I want to start a business. I just don't know what to do. Is there a book that you would first tell them to read? Is there a resource that you would tell them to go after? Is there a person that you would tell them to emulate? What would be the 101 of success in your eyes? Yeah. So I, it's not a book either, man. I think my favorite book in the world today is Google. Really? See, I think Google's evil, but we'll, let's have a conversation about that. Yeah, so you, just... you, you mean as a platform, as a resource to be able to... Tap into knowledge. Tap into knowledge. Yeah. Google right. is that resource is massive today. You can't, you can't know, you know, I mean, come on, sit down and read a book for two hours. No one person has that much to say that's worth listening to for two hours. Right. I have, I have a stack of books that I'm trying to read and it's hard. To, it's not as easy to get through a book as it used to be when we were younger and, and, yeah, it's boring. and the times gets, were different. Right. Yeah, you, but Google in terms of a platform is very skewed. I mean, it's basically been proven by Project Veritas and, and, and James O'Keefe and otherwise that Google is known to be very pro-liberal and anti-conservative thought. So how do you filter all, all of that if you're a political person? You're not, or you're just, you're not going to. You're not right. going to. It's impossible. Today, it's a, the, 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 the amount of content out there being thrown at us, the noise that we're hearing on a daily basis. So now it gets into intuition. You've got to trust your intuition. Stop listening. See, even though you're researching, you're reading, you're learning, you're not following anybody. That's the difference. The difference in a world of, of, over, of abundance of information is you look and don't look to follow anybody. That's not the right. goal. Follow yourself. It's like back to your question. What would I tell that person? F what do you want to do? What do you love? And go into that direction. You don't have to start your own business to do what you love, right? If you find a company or a product that you really believe in and you really love, go work for them, man. Go get involved with that. So, you know, that leads me to a really important question for you. It's for you. And uh, Charlie Kirk, who's a great young leader and a conservative, and he's almost spreads the message that college is not what it used to be. What is your take on going to college these days? Unless you're going to be a doctor or a lawyer. Yeah. I think, or you want a great experience of having a great time for four years and networking, then go to college. Right. Um, you're, going to, you're going to drop, you know, hundred to $200,000, but. If money, grows on tree, go to, if money grows on trees, go to college. Otherwise get that life experience, right? It's all about, it is. It, it, it's, it's not, college was the gatekeeper of information. It's not anymore. It's not anymore. now. It's now it's a bastion of liberal thought. Uh, the great Dennis Prager said, "If you want to play Russian roulette with your values, send your children to college." And by the way, <laughs> you're drink. What are you drinking? We were talking about this before in the break. I'm what drinking. What are you drinking? This is liquid lunch. It's all. It's okay that we talk about this. And I'm having. I'm drinking liquid death, which is uh, sparkling water from from the Alps. But why? Wait. It looks like it's like some cracked out energy drink. What in the it's fresh not. heck is that? It's not. It's just literally sparkling water from, from the Alps. It says murder okay. your thirst. So I am not any great branding or marketing genius. I'm probably not a genius in any capacity and certainly I'm not a member of Mensa. Let's get in touch with those liquid death people and tell them they need to rebrand because that branding is far too scary for a sophisticated sparkling water drink. Like I'm drinking my La Croix. It's like kind of cute. It's petite. Like I love it. Man. Liquid death needs to rebrand. That's right. That's right. So um, even further off topic, I know you love to box. I have a son that wants to be a boxer. When he grows up, he's seven. How do I steer him away from that and keep him as a hobby like you have and make him a great entrepreneur instead? No, man, you, because great entrepreneurs are built in the ring. I mean, okay. it's such a vital see, It's It's so holistic, right? So totally holistic. You have to you have to incorporate some type of of physical fitness regimen into your into your lifestyle man if you don't you're not going to be you're not going to be a great entrepreneur man it's about the mind so um i mean we're going to go down the rabbit hole right now because you're talking about physical fitness i am an exercise enthusiast i'm also a snack enthusiast so you know we got to reconcile those two have you ever done sebastian legree's mega former machine no okay this is an episode of liquid lunch okay so you and i are going to talk offline there's this machine that i do almost every day called a mega former and it is mind over matter and it's totally crazy. But when, so when my son says to me, mom, I want to be a boxer. And I say, Oh, I didn't hear you. You want to be a hedge fund manager. I should stop doing that and just let him get in the ring. Let him get in the ring. And you know what? Yeah. Like hedge fund manager, all, you know, we all want to be something we don't know. Well, soon as, he gets, as soon as he gets in the ring, gets punched in the face. Let's see what he wants to be. So did you think you would be giving parenting advice today? <laughs> <laughs> I was open to anything, man. I was open to anything. Yeah, I know you have two daughters and they're great successes in their own right. What was the strategy to get them? One's a model, I think, right? They're both really, really. No, I, I actually have a son and a daughter. Noah is my son. He's 24. My daughter's Taylor. She's 25. And they're okay. both in the uh, film industry. Yeah. Wow. 
And how did they get there? It must have been with a lot of great guidance from you. What was that advice that you gave your children? You know, early guidance in the years, yeah. If, you know, just teaching them follow what you follow what you believe, do what you want to do, and and don't let anybody tell you you can't do it. And and then when they determined what they wanted to do, I helped until they were at eighteen, and then they were on their own. I think that's great, parent. Well. I know nothing about finance. I know nothing about parenting and I know nothing clearly about energy drinks, but what I do know is that I need more time with you, Greg. Thank you so much for your time today. Let's do it again. And I'm sorry I wasn't John Tobacco, but I certainly did my best. Oh, thanks, Aaron. It was great, man. Thank you. Take care.